नाना साहेब द मेन आर्किटेक्ट ऑफ द 1857 म्यूटनी वन ऑफ द मोस्ट डिस्टिंग्विश्ड पेशवाज ऑफ द मराठा एम्पायर नाना साहेब वॉज अ ग्रेट रेडिकल लीडर ऑफ इंडिया ही एक्वायर्ड ग्रेट मिलिट्री अचीवमेंट्स एंड ऑल्सो फॉर्निश एबल सपोर्ट टू हिज एम्पायर प्लेड अ सिग्निफिकेंट रोल इन ग्रोथ डेवलपमेंट एंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन अंडर हिज लीडरशिप कानपुर रोज टू डिफाई ब्रिटिश रूल ड्यूरिंग द एटीन फिफ्टी सेवन अप ही विल ही वॉज द मोस्ट इंस्ट्रूमेंटल कमांडर ऑफ द म्यूटनी The revolutionary movements headed by him trembled the British and gave them a brutal period. However, he became Britain's most hated foreign enemy for his part in the 1857 Kanpur massacre. Validities mixed with contentious tales drew on villainous abstractions to depict Nana. But the contributions of Nana Saheb in the 1857 mutiny is very significant and he will be remembered as a great revolutionary leader of India. Early life. Nana Saheb was born on May 19, 1824 as Nana Govind Dhondu Pant to Narayan Bhat and Ganga Bai. Nana's father, a well-educated Deccani Brahmini, traveled with his family to the Western Ghats. to become a former peshwa court official in bithur after marathas defeat in the third maratha war the east india company exiled peshwa baji rao to to bithur where he maintained a large base from the british pensions he received in the absence of a child baji rao adopted nana saheb and his younger brother in 1827 Nana Saheb's childhood companions include Tatya Tope, Azimullah Khan and Manikarnika Tambe. After Baji Rao II was exiled to Bithur, Tatya Tope and his family also moved there. Tatya Tope was Nana Saheb's fencing master. Azimullah Khan joined Nana Saheb's court as secretary upon the death of Baji Rao II in 1851. inheritance and the doctrine of lap the doctrine of laps was a policy of annexation proposed by the british governor general lord dalhousie according to the doctrine any private state or territory subject to direct influence of the british east india company as a vassal state under the british subsidiary system were automatically annexed if the ruler was clearly incompetent or died without a direct heir the latter superseded the ancient legal right of an heirless indian ruler to choose a successor furthermore the british had to decide whether potential rulers were competent its doctrine and application were considered illegal by the indians at that the time the company had absolute and royal administrative jurisdiction over many areas scattered across the subcontinent with the growing power of the east india company discontent flared among sections of indian society according to peshwa's will nana saheb through adoption was considered the heir to the throne of the marathas and was eligible for an annual pension of 80000 euros from the east india company however after baji rao's two's death the company suspended the pension on the grounds that nana was not the natural heir and the kingdom ceased to exist nana was deeply offended by both the termination of his pension and the suspension of various titles and concessions that had been withheld by baji rao in exile As a result Nana Saheb sent an envoy to England in 1853 to settle his case with the British government. However, Azimullah Khan was unable to get the British to retreat and return to India in 1855. Revolutionary activities. Role in 1857 mutiny. Nana Saheb won the confidence of Charles Hillerston, the collector of Kanpur. He was to collect the power of 1500 soldiers to support British in case of an uprising. On June 6, 1857, at the time of revolt of Kanpur, the British army took refuge on a barricade north of the city. Amidst the chaos unfolding in Kanpur, Nana and his force entered the British magazine located north of the city. 
soldiers from the 53rd indigenous infantry who were guarding the ammunition depot thought that nana had come on behalf of the company to protect the ammunition depot however upon entering the magazine nana sahib stated that he was a participant in the uprising against the company and that he intended to become a vassal of bahadur shah too after taking possessions of the company treasury Nana advanced to restore the Maratha confederacy under the Peshwa tradition and decided to capture Kanpur. On his way, Nana met the rebel company soldiers at Kalyanpur and pleaded to join him in his pledge to defeat the British in Kanpur with the promise of double pay and bounty. Attack on Wheeler's entrenchment on June 5, 1857. Nana Sahib sent a letter to General Wheeler to expect an attack at 10 a.m. On June 6, his forces including the rebellious soldiers attacked the company's segment at 10:30 a.m. The power of the company was not ready to attack properly but were able to protect themselves because the rebellious attackers were reluctant to enter the entrenchment. As the news on their advances spread, many rebellious sepoys joined Nana Sahib. By June 10 he led 12000 Indian soldiers to about 15000 soldiers the nana sahib's army in the first week of the surroundings set firing positions in the attached file defensive captain john moori reacted and deployed his strength overnight faced with moori's planned retreat nana sahib decided to attempt a direct attack on the british entrenchment but the rebel soldiers showed little enthusiasm sniping and bombing continued until june 23 1857 the rebel soldiers under nana sahib were prompted to launch a major assault on the entrenched on june 23 1857 however at the end of the day they were unable to enter the entrenched camp the entrenchment regularly lost soldiers and civilians due to continuous artillery sniper shooting and assault by perpetrators general wheeler's morale was low after his son lieutenant gordon wheeler was bought in an assault on the barracks nana sahib and his consultants came with the plan to end the deadlock on june 24 he sent a prisoner rose greenway for the intersection of transferring them In exchange for return he promised a secure passage of Europeans to Sati Chora Ghat. The next day on June 25, Nana Sahib sent a second note signed by himself with another prisoner, Mrs. Jacobi. Intents divided into two groups about different reviews, the group in favor of the continuing defense while the second group was ready to adopt an offer. During the next day there was no bombing of the Nana Sahib's forces. Finally, Wheeler decided to accept the offer in exchange for a safe fragment in Allahabad. After the day of preparing and burying the dead, Europeans decided to leave to Allahabad on June 27, 1857. Sati Chora Ghat massacre on the morning of June 27. A vast group led by Wheeler originated from the trench. Nana sent many carts, dories and elephants for women, children and the sick to get to the river side. Company officers and military personnel were allowed to bring their weapons and ammunition and were escorted by almost all of the rebels. They arrived at Sati Chora Ghat at 8 am. At this ghat, Nana Sahib arranged about 40 boats. Soldiers who came to Kanpur to dispel their anger eager to participate in the raid of the trenches also watched the proceedings in Sati Chora Wheeler and his group were the first to board and drift off the boat At this point a shot was fired perhaps pulled from the high shore The Indian boatman jumped outside and started swimming towards the shore During their jump fires were put out and boats were burned Controversy surrounds on what happened next at Sati Chora and it is not known who fired the first shot but the departing Europeans were attacked by the sepoy rebels most were killed or captured Controversies about the massacre 
Some company officials claimed Nana to have already organized rebels which resulted in the killing of all Europeans although the company of Eastern India later accused that Nana triggered the slaughter of innocent people no final test has proved to demonstrate that Nana planned or ordered the massacre Some historians believe that Satichaura Ghat massacre is the result of confusion and not a plan implemented by Nana and colleagues of him. However, the fact that the cannon sniper preset along the river been recorded on the stage can suggest a previous planning. Following events. However, amid the turmoil at Satichaura Ghat, General Tatya Tope ordered the second Bengali cavalry unit and some artillery units to open fire on the Europeans. The sepoys of the rebel cavalry entered the water to kill the remaining soldiers of the company with swords and pistols. The surviving men were killed while the women and children were captured as Nana did not approve of their murder. Rebel soldiers also followed the slowly drifting wheelers boats. After a few shots the Europeans on the boat decided to host a white flag They were escorted from the boat and taken back to Savda house. The surviving men were seated on the ground as the soldiers prepared to kill them. The women claimed to die with their husbands but were separated. Nana gave the English minister Moncrief permission to read the prayers before they were killed. British troops were first injured with a gun and then killed with a sword. The women and children were taken to Sabda house to reunite with the rest of their colleagues. Bibighar massacre. The survived women and children about 120 in the number was being displaced from the Sabda house to Bibighar Kanpur. Another group of Fatehgarh women and children and some other women who have been imprisoned were brought to Bibighar. In total there were about 200 women and children. Nana Sahib deposited a tawaif named Husaini Khan to take care of these survivors. He decided to use these prisoners in the negotiations with East India Company. The forces of the company derived from Allahabad under the command of General Henry Havelock to take Kanpur and Lucknow. The forces advanced constantly in the direction of Kanpur. Nana sent an army to check their advance and two armies met in Fatahpur. on 12 july in which the general forces of havelock appeared winning and captured the city nana then sent another force under the command of his brother balara on july 15 the british forces under general havelock defeated the army of bala in the battle of aeon on july 16th havelock started to move forward to kanpur During this period it became clear that the strength of the company approached Kanpur and Nana's trading was futile. Nana was informed that the British soldiers administered by Havelock and Neil committed violence against the inhabitants of the Indian village. Nana and the colleagues discussed what to do with prisoners in Bibighar. Finally on July 15 Nana Sahib filed an order to kill women and children trapped in Bibighar. Before their death Some women asked for a little time on their prayer and the request was granted. After prayer, the prisoners were killed and the bodies were in some people still alive were thrown to a well in Bibighar. British recapturing Kanpur. On 16 July 1857, the forces of the company reached Kanpur. General Havelock was notified that Sahib took up position in the village of Ahira. The forces of him commenced to attack the forces of Nana and emerged gaining a victory. Nana then exploded the Kanpur magazine, abandoned the place and fled to Bithor. When the British soldiers realized about the Bibighar massacre, they exploded with retaliation, including looting and burns. On July 19, General Havelock proceeded with his actions in Bithor. but nana sahib had already excited british forces murdered all the inhabitants of bithor killed men and women murdered adults and children nana's palace in bithor was seized without obstruction nana sahib's disappearance and death still doubtful nana disappeared after the company recaptured kanpur 
His general, Tatya Tope, attempted to retake Kanpur in November 1857 after assembling a large army, consisting mainly of rebel soldiers from Gwalior's squad. He gained control of all routes west and northwest of Kanpur, but was later defeated in the Second Battle of Kanpur. In September 1857, Nana is said to have fallen into a serious fever. However, this is sceptical. By 1859, Nana was reported to have fled to Nepal. Percival Landon recorded that Nana Sahib lived out his days in western Nepal, in Thapa Teli, near Ridithang, under the safety of Sir Jang Bahadur Rana, the Prime Minister of Nepal. Some early government documents claim that he died in Nepal after a tiger attacked him during a hunt on September 24, 1859, but other accounts on the matter differ. Two letters and a diary recovered in the 1970s tell us that he lived as an ascetic. Yogindra Dayanand Maharaj in Sehore on the coast of Gujarat until his death in 1903. Legacy Rani Lakshmi Bai Tatya Tope and Rao Sahib declared Nana Sahib their Peshwa in June 1858 in Gwalior. He took up the role of Peshwa of a mighty empire at a very young age. He contributed heavily to the development of the city of Pune. His architectural developments, notably the Parvati Temple and the first ever permanent bridge over the Mutha River are his great undertakings. He also created a reservoir in the neighbouring town of Kataraj to supply pure water to the inhabitants of the town. After India's independence in 1947, Nana was applauded as a freedom fighter and Nana Rao Park in Kanpur was constructed in honour of Nana and his brother Bala Rao. Conclusion The Indian rebellion leader Nana Sahib is truly a great freedom fighter of our country. However, he earned a mixed legacy. A great commander but the man instrumental in the atrocities committed on the English in Kanpur. Though his achievements as the renowned Peshwa are tremendously great, the unsuspected attack on the British at the Satichara cannot be justified. He will always be indexed as a man who reneged on his steel.